Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Hope Harbor Zoo. Hope you guys are all having the most wonderful of wonderful days so far. My name is Leaf, and it's so great to have you guys back over here as we explore the like, quite largest update that we've ever had to Hope Harbor Zoo. I can't really remember when the last time we actually toured this facility was. I think it was quite some time ago. Uh, but we have a lot to cover. Uh, you might already notice there's like a whole bunch of new areas like around here, around here. Uh, and definitely a lot of stuff back there. So we're going to cover this all today. I re this is going to be so messy. I don't know how we're going to actually do it. But um, we're going to do it nonetheless. So obviously you would kind of enter through this area right over here. This would be kind of where the um, kind of like the dock would come in. And I still need to go through here and update... Um, some of these people who have helped us out along the way, Forge, Seth, Lion, we have Brody over there, we have um, Jorin, just a whole bunch of awesome people that have either donated animals, done buildings for us, a whole bunch of awesome stuff. And uh, I really gotta get back to that relatively soon. But this is the dock area. Now, in case if this is your first Hope Harbor Zoo episode, uh, Hope Harbor Zoo is a ZSU zoo. So that means we are part of like an online kind of role-playing community. I hate to say it like that because it always sounds kind of gross. But it's such a wonderful little community where you're running your own zoo. You get to trade animals with other people. I always say it's like franchise mode, but better. Because you know your animals are going to a place with the face i like to say you know your animals are going to a good facility and if they're not going to a good facility uh there may be repercussions for that but over here is the lovely entrance that lion did i have to go through here and actually edit in here but i'm too scared to because as you can see computer's chugging a little bit uh, I think I'm getting around like 15 to 30 frames in here it is not good that well um but eventually soon I'll be able to update it, like, you know, once I get a little bit more steady cash going. But our first exhibits are actually in here. This is kind of like the education center. It's very, um, it's very bare bones right now. I just have a few, like, habitats in here. I have some empty terrariums right here, just in case if we do get some extra species. I have one over here for, I believe, salamanders. I think I have some skinks in here. These are just very temperate enclosures, nothing really too crazy. Um, we also have Steve Irwin's for scale pretty much everywhere. You'll notice that as we kind of make our way through here. And a few other like snake exhibits for corn snakes or uh, black rat snakes, stuff like that. We have another ant terrarium in here. I believe these are for the honeypot ants temporarily until I find them like a better place to live. We have the Texas leaf cutter ants in here. And you can see they have something over here where you could actually watch them kind of climb the tree a little bit, uh, bringing leaves from this habitat. The keepers would kind of refresh them every so often. Uh, ideally, I would like this to be kind of like San Diego, where they have like dirt in here and stuff. But for the time being, I really haven't played with that too much, haven't really diddled away with that too well. Uh, but this would kind of be the information area, so if you need, like, information about the zoo or, like, you know, any extra add-ons that you could use with your experience, that's where you would do that right there. I have a few Indian terrapins over here, nothing too crazy. Um, I forget what this is actually for. I think it's for another salamander. I think tiger barred salamander. And then marbled salamander right over here. I love my salamanders. They're so cool. But that's really it for the information center. It's nothing really too crazy. Um, and I also do have a giant ant statue that I found on the workshop up there. I thought that was super cute to have. Uh, just as like, you know, it singles that, um, you know, they have animals in there. They have bugs in there. So if you like bugs, you could go right in. Uh, but these plazas were mostly done by me. Um, I think I got these uh, fountains off the workshop too. But these buildings, for the most part, are by Lion. Except for one I'll bring up right over there, which we'll talk about soon. Uh, but this is the gift shop again. Uh, because it's so laggy, I haven't really dabbled too well in here. Uh, I would kind of like to flesh this out a little bit more, but you could see... It's a little bit of a hellscape just to be able to walk through here, and I should also hit play so we could actually look at the water. But this is our Atlantic Pygmy Octopus exhibit. Um, obviously, a Pygmy Octopus is very small, so I will be transferring him out relatively soon to the aquarium, which we'll get to in a little bit. 
Uh, but I would love to turn this into just a generic reef tank once I actually get the fish for it. Um, and if you listen closely, if I haven't, like, told the, um, uh, audio, you could actually hear the Hope Harbor Zoo theme, which is very fun. Uh, I always love to just crash, I guess. All right, back in here. <laughs> okay, so I should probably get out of this area in that case if it's just going to lag like that or crash even. Uh, but regardless, that is pretty much what's happening in there. And I also have this restaurant over here and it seems like it's lagging even more now. Hold on, let me see if I could close out of like some of these programs. Uh, but we do have the restaurant over here. It's nothing too crazy. Um... Yeah, I, I just wanted a restaurant in here, but I never really got anywhere with it because interior scared the living daylights out of me. And I would also have some restrooms over here. But regardless, let's actually get started with the real zoo. Uh, but yeah, so over here we have all of our flamingos. Unfortunately, I tried my best to get all the animals in this zoo uh, that I probably could. Uh, but some of them I wasn't able to get in here, so ideally there would also be Chilean and lesser flamingos in here. Uh, it's just a nice big flamingo pool. Eventually I do want to split them up. Uh, so I would have a Chilean one somewhere and I would move the graders and lesser flamingos. I don't even have graders yet. I'm just playing for them for the future. I would move them somewhere else and this one would just be American flamingos because they are the brightest. <laughs> Uh, I also have my pond sliders in here, so there is a lot of pond sliders all over this pool. Uh, but they would probably just stay in here. They really wouldn't venture out uh, because all the areas where they could get out are fenced off. And if they escape, then they're just heading into the salt water, and that really wouldn't be too good. But that's really it for over there. I can bring us over here as well. I miss building in this like initial area. Because it was just so bright. It felt so new to do it. And it was just such a joy to build in. A uh, big shout out to G-Rex for the Beacon of Hope statue right over there. We'll talk a little bit more about the rest of the statues. And how you could submit your own to be featured in Hope Harbor Zoo. Uh, but yeah, that's really it. We have all the flamingos just chilling in here. And right over here we also have pretty much the only like out of the way exhibit around here. It's the Asian small clawed otters, and I'm just realizing now I also forgot to put these guys in. But it's just one big Asian small clawed otter habitat. It's very nice, very, um, I don't know. It's very modern, kind of like the rest of this area, which I kind of like. Um, it's just nice and bright, which, I don't know, I do miss that initial style of Hope Island, Hope Harbor Zoo. Oh, jeez. Uh, and we should also probably talk about this area over here and talk about our boy Gerald. So we finally got Gerald in here. Uh, he's one of these guys in here, one of the bigger ones. Uh, so I was finally able to get him through an event. Thank you so much, Tiger Drake, for like gunning for that because that literally made my day. But this is our big um, harbor seal enclosure. It's nothing too fancy, but I did design this for, I believe this was back when Zoov was in. ZSU and he had like the seal enclosure contest and I was like okay I want to go ham for this one I want to make the best seal enclosure ever so I did this all I did some backstage as well it was super fun but we have everyone in here it is absolutely a fabulous little area and it also lags the crap out of my computer which is a little bit of a sad thing to say but hopefully soon again I'll get an upgrade I swear guys but that's really it for this area. I very much modeled it after kind of like the coastline of Maine and stuff like that. Just very interesting kind of like rockwork dynamics and stuff like that. So that's really it for over there. And then that's really it for like this whole section we'll get over there once we actually finish up with this area. But I think we're going to carry on with South America. So this is continuing on with the sculpture garden again. Just a few different uh, sculptures from Bekaboo, another one from G-Rex, T-Rex, um, I believe that one was by, uh, I don't know if that was, um, not Gomez, it, it's someone, was that Booty? I forget, please let me know because I'm forgetting it, but I essentially just put out something that was like, what gives you hope? 
and how would you kind of like bring that into like statue form so we have this little statue area that leads you into the bird area but we'll get to there once we actually do get to there let's continue down this way though with kind of like the first real episode of hope harbor zoo way back in the day please keep in mind that there are some items in here that aren't supposed to be these colors so like i'm mainly talking about any modded props that got their flexi color values reset like a while ago so you might notice some of these bins aren't the right color you might notice that some of these um birds aren't the right color and i'm just realizing we're gonna be in for a rude awakening once we actually do get to the south america house uh i'll show you guys what i mean once we actually do get there but this is the ocelot habitat again this would be netted over ideally um i gotta actually do that soon since i can probably fake it nowadays uh but it's just one big ocelot habitat it's just very nice i don't know i really do like it and of course we have it with the uh crossover right here so the ocelots can actually go over this bridge and it's super awesome check that out yay uh, and we also do have a lot of water in here so that they're able to kind of make use of that so that's just always super cool to see nothing really out there towards the right so we're going to continue on this small little area down here uh, nothing too crazy over here to the left. Ideally, I would like to put, like, maybe some small yards or something for some animals. But I think I'm gonna stay away from that because I do like this kind of, like, dead area. But we do have this Nutria area. Um, the Nutrias are some not recent additions. They were actually here in Hope Island Zoo. I think the Nutrias were the last animal I built for in Hope Island Zoo before I quote-unquote lost the map. I was able to get it back, but I was like, listen, Hope Harbor Zoo is just so much brighter. It's so much cooler. We're just going to stick with that. But these Nutrias have some very interesting digs. Uh, it's nothing too insane. They have a little bit of land area, which you're not really able to see from down below. Which is totally fine by me, it doesn't really bother me too much, but I can understand why someone would want to see up above ground, but I still love their underwater viewing so much more, it's so much more dynamic, I don't know, I like it. But as we continue down this area, the plan for this is to get maned wolves up here to the left, and then spectacled bears over there, and we'll be talking about that later. Over to the right, though, we do have our Guanacos and our Reyes, which is a very lovely addition. And I do gotta kind of decorate this area throughout here with the custom curbs again, because I kind of gave up halfway through. Uh, so that's another thing I will be doing kind of before the premiere of Season 3. Uh, season 3 is just gonna be me cleaning everything up and getting to work on, like, the big ticket animals that we got. And we'll talk about those as time goes on. But I do have the Patagonia Mars in here. Again, another animal that I was like, oh crap, I forgot to put these guys in. <laughs> but they have a nice, relatively large exhibit for Patagonia Mars. It's uh, nice and big. And I also do have Chicoan Mars in here too. Uh, so I have two different types of Maras. And I really do want the third one as well. I think they're mountain cavies. And if I could just have all three of them together, that would be insane to have. Uh, so we can... Actually, I'm going to pop up here and bring us back over here. So, as we continue off our way from the Ocelot Habitat, we have this building over here. And I'm just going to make a jump cut over here as we kind of talk about this in the map file where I'm actually working on what this is going to be. So, I'll see you guys once we get back. Alright. <laughs> I can't believe how much, like, smoother it is in here. Alright, everyone, welcome. So, this is our desert house. Uh, this is going to be kind of like a North American desert house specifically, because I was able to do a few trades with Wolf and some other North America peeps, and get a whole bunch of awesome new, kind of like, North American desert-y kind of animals. Uh, so I have Western Pond Turtles in here. Really, really awesome setup. I don't know, I kind of like it. Very organic shapes in here, which I really enjoy. Uh, one of my favorite things that I'm doing in here is that if we actually turn this up on full bright, you could see that the sand in here is slightly blue tinted, and that's specifically on purpose to really work with the blue lights in here. I really want it to feel like, you know, you're in the middle of like a, um, I don't know. Like, you're in the middle of a desert, it's all blue. I don't know. I like it. Uh, I have Sonoran Box Turtles in here. I have a few, like, uh, 
bull snake, I believe, which is the lar largest, wow, largest native snake in North America. We have, I forget what's in there, it's a turtle of some kind. I have some striped skunks in this little habitat, if I could actually find them. There he is. Look at him. Super cute. Uh, in here, I also do have the nine-banded armadillo, and I also do have the ringtail in here. Very solid creatures to begin with. I do have our burrowing owls in here, and that's really it for this exhibit. Um, I do want to add a lot more terrariums in here as time goes on, and I do want to kind of work out like the logistics in here a little bit better and actually like cover it up so we're not looking out into space. Um, but we'll be doing that eventually soon. Let's pop back over to the rest of the tour in that case. So I'll see you guys there. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed the North American desert house. Very excited for that one. It's going to be such a cool little build, but, um, yeah, moving on from there, we have yet another house to check out. Uh, this is the South America house. Again, one of the most beautiful exteriors, Mr. Wyatt Andrews workshop made this and it was just incredible to have in here. Uh, I feel a little guilty because I had him build this and now I'm not feeling the interior, but I still will use the shell of this build uh, that he made, but I think later down the line, I will completely renovate this entire interior because you could tell it's very boring. It's very open. I don't want that for this build. Uh, Specifically for South America, I want it to feel like you're going through an expedition. I want it to feel like you're going through an adventure. Uh, but we should probably talk about what I kind of messed up. <laughs> so over here, you might notice that I have a bunch of different animals. If I could actually access them. And if it's like, you know, actually sped up. Okay, so they're just in the core. Oh. Nope, all of them are kind of exploring the jaguar habitat. Um, this is very embarrassing, I do apologize. Um, this isn't how everything is supposed to be, kind of at all. <laughs> so we're just going to kind of talk about this area while I kind of get this all settled. So this is Ansa Lifetime. It's kind of a pun because the genus name for, uh, not the genus name, the scientific name for jaguar is Panthera Ansa. So it is kind of like a once in a lifetime experience, but it's an once a lifetime experience. You get, you get it, you get the joke. Good, good, good. Um, so in here we have all these animals that would kind of cross paths with the jaguar at some point or another. More or less, some of them probably wouldn't. Like the pudu, I don't think would really uh, interact with jaguars all too much, but you never really know. Uh, so I have these guys in here, and I have, like, the black caiman in here. And I do have the squirrel monkeys, but they're way too tiny for me to actually be fiddling with. So I'm just going to speed time up and actually get to the point where, you know, everything is kind of where it's supposed to be. And then we'll take off from there. But as you enter this building, I originally planned to have monkey cages over here and over here. Not really cages, but habitats. But you could tell they're not really the most inspired thing in the world. They're kind of boring. Uh, and yeah, that's what I really don't like about it. I'm not a big fan of this building style anymore. I kind of just built them just to get them in there. And don't get me wrong, they would be perfectly fine habitats compared to like some of the things that people build for squirrel monkeys <laughs> in real life too. Uh, but that's really it. And even habitats like this, I do think it's quite beautiful, but it doesn't really scream what I want out of this build anymore. But this is for our Southern Pudu, and we also do have a whole bunch of, like, different animals in here. Uh, free-flying birds, ducks, stuff like that. And they'd be able to fly throughout this entire building, really. And we do have double doors so that they're able to stay safe. Uh, I also do have some terrariums in here, which are for Rainbow Boa and another one, I believe. I honestly forget. Uh, but I do have this little area down here. This is for our Capybara. These guys have a lovely little indoor habitat as well as a great outdoor habitat as well. We'll see that in just a little bit. I do love this little kind of like bump out section though, and I do apologize for the lag in here. Again, it's just such a hassle just to... You know, even load into this map sometimes. It's just, like, the worst. Uh, but over here, we do have our little free roaming animal area. 
So I do have the green iguanas, so you can see I use Nyx props versions right over there, which allowed me to get this guy chilling up here. Super awesome right there. And I do also have our red-footed tortoises, just a really awesome area for you to be able to check these guys out. I also do have our emerald tree boa, I believe. Uh, just really nice guy right there. And then as we kind of make our way over here, you can see we do have a Pudu in there. I guess that's live enrichment or something. I Okay, listen, I'm using this kind of like as a way for ZSU staff to kind of judge these habitats and make sure I'm not doing anything I'm not supposed to be doing, but please ignore that. That's not supposed to be there. What I also did recently too, I got a Black Cayman, I believe from Booty Warrior. So I was able to actually kind of create this little bump out section inside of the jaguar habitat for these guys now keep in mind this is a full-grown black caiman the one that i do have is actually a juvenile so just pretend that's a baby over there i will build for a better habitat once he actually ages up but this is kind of like one of the main viewings for the jaguar um and again i apologize it's so freaking laggy i hate it uh, but you actually get a really, really good look into their deep diving area. And you can also get a good look into their actual land area. As well as the area from before. Gave you a good look into that. I also do have these tiny little terrariums in here. Uh, you would have like skinks or lizards or snakes or something in there. Or even insects. I really want to get some more insects for this area. So that's kind of what you would see in there. And again, another juvenile area. This is for a baby spectacled caiman. Uh, just a really nice area for them. I don't know. I kind of like it. And then I have a much larger one for Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. Ideally, I would like to throw some more South American fish in here because you can actually cohab uh, Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman with some uh, fish. And that would be something I really like to do in there. But one last thing I do want to check out in here is this kind of like little tiny area. And if I kind of just zoom our way over here. Uh, because I want to get out of this building as soon as possible because it's so freaking laggy. We just have a bunch of tiny little terrariums uh, for a whole bunch of different lizards. We have them for frogs. We have uh, red tegu right in there. Um, and you could honestly hear in the gameplay right now, I do have frog calls going because that's kind of what you would hear in this area. Bunch of mice. I have some rats in here too. Nothing really too crazy. But as we kind of make our way outside of there, you hang a direct left, and you'll end up in this big section over here. Very much Pantanal kind of area. So I do have the capybaras just chilling in here. I do have these um, kind of inspired by the Dallas Zoo. I believe these Pantanal signs or um, just wood beams. I was always so captivated by them whenever I did see them being used. So I was like, okay, I just want to throw some in here for a little bit of extra color. And across the way, you get a gorgeous view into the big plains area. So this is where the um, kind of like perspective would really work out. So I am not sure where the rest of our animals are, but the guanaco and the rhea would be in this habitat. Again, don't really know where they are. Uh, but ideally, once we actually do get everything in here, you would have spectacled bears right over there on that kind of dirt mound. And over here, if I'm looking in the right place, yeah, right over there. So if I kind of just like look for that elm tree right over there, I do need to bring that terrain up a little bit more, but that is where the main wolves would be. Uh, so I do have both of those animals. I was able to get main wolves in an event and I was able to get spectacled bears from, I believe their name is Tigris. I could be wrong. Um, I got to double check on that relatively soon. <laughs> but I was able to trade out one of our sun bears for a spectacled bear. And I just find that just really solid trade for both parties involved. So that is just super duper to have. And we also do have the exterior for the jaguar habitat because they deserve it. So it's just a really awesome caged enclosure. I believe I used Haribo's netting up there. Really super awesome piece right over there. Really awesome blueprint. And as we kind of continue our way right down here, we got another underwater viewing. Super cool, right? Uh, I'm actually going to pause the game just so that we could possibly save on frames a little bit because it is getting very laggy. I have like all my other programs off. I have no idea why it's getting this bad. 
So that is really it for, oh, no, that is not it for South America. So ideally, once you make your way across like the spectacled bears, your main wolves, and ideally I would like to get peccaries in there too. You would also have the, one of the latest exhibit builds is the butterfly house. Again, um, just a really solid build all around. I hope you guys enjoyed that speed build, but it's just a really beautiful area. I mean, it's just super awesome just to be able to come in here chill out watch some butterflies and uh just enjoy some plants too so i just really enjoy that i don't know i it was just a beautiful build to put together all right so that is it for south america and i believe we can continue on with raptor ridge so making your way down this little path over here you find your way over here to the big aviary uh so this is the largest walkthrough aviary currently in hope harbor zoo and we do have a whole bunch of beautiful birds, specifically waterfowl. This is our North American waterfowl aviary, and I want the largest waterfowl collection in ZSU. I want the largest North American waterfowl collection in ZSU. And for that, I made the biggest aviary I could possibly make. So we have a whole bunch of different animals in here. We have a whole bunch of like teals, wood ducks, mallards. Uh, mute swans, even though I think those guys are European. Um, just a whole bunch of different animals. <laughs> I don't have any of them installed right now because, again, if I add any, if I add like another animal in here, my computer will explode. <laughs> um, so just pretend that there are like ducks and swans swimming around there. I should probably add like some audio in those buildings just to make sure that it kind of fits the vibes. What I also do have in here are owls, so I believe that this is our Eurasian Eagle Owl. I don't have the names on me right now, unfortunately, because Chrome would just, again, make my computer explode. But I do have a whole bunch of owl aviaries. I believe this one is Spectacled Owls. And I just can't get over this small piece, small piece blueprint by, uh, I think it was Drac. It just looks incredible. Look at that stuff. Just a really solid piece all around. But moving on from there, I also do have our African waterfowl aviary. So this is specific for African animals. So we do have uh, blue-winged geese and Egyptian geese in here. Uh, even though Egyptian geese aren't really geese, they are closely related to ducks, more or less. So over here, I'm just going to cut across the path because I can tell this is going to be a long video. I do have one of our birds in here. I believe this is the red-tailed falcon. Uh... It might be, I gotta double check on that, but um, I believe we have red-tailed falcons, we have stellar sea eagles, and we also have a uh, golden eagle. Golden eagle, yeah. So we have these lovely, huge, huge um, kind of aviaries. I believe they were originally made by Crocs, and I wanted kind of like half dome kind of styles of these just to give it like a sense of scale. And we have the Stellars in here. I should probably net this up because I do think that they are not required to be clipped. Um, so that's something I gotta do relatively soon. Please don't yell at me, Tiger Drake. <laughs> Just pretend that it's there. Uh, you could give me the excuse because if I add another piece, again, computer explodes into a thousand tiny bits. Uh, but those Stellar Seagulls are courtesy of Tiger Drake. Really, really awesome staff member. Uh, and he gave the, he gave me one for my birthday, which was really fun to have. But moving on from there, we also are getting into some relatively new stuff. This is never before seen on the channel before. So on the left, we do have a build for an owl. I forget what kind. Um, yeah, I really don't know what kind. I think it might be... It's not barn owl, is it? Our barn owls are kept somewhere else. I gotta double check on that. Uh, but over here, we do have our seabird aviary. So this has eiders, it has grebes, and I believe it also has kitty wakes. I could be mistaken. Those, nope, yep, yeah, it does have kitty wakes. So that was a really awesome event that we had. It was essentially like a, a waterfowl event. But I was like, okay, listen, I already have a bunch of like cool waterfowl. I want to see what other kinds of birds I could get. And I kind of settled on like you know, cold weather birds of like, you know, the main area. And I thought it turned out pretty good. So it's just a really solid habitat all over. I don't know. I like it. And then over here, we also do have the Rocky Mountain Aviary. So this is just a very fun 
fun build. So I do have a bunch of Rocky Mountain songbirds in here, and I also do have jackrabbits. Uh, so that was a cool find by Andy. Andy was able to give me uh, two males, and they would more or less kind of just chill in the back because rabbits are kind of not really zoo animals, and they typically get stressed out kind of easily. So they would kind of stay in hiding a little bit. Meanwhile, people could just watch the songbirds and stuff like that. Really do like that idea. But essentially, you would kind of follow this path a little bit more. I don't know why it's so laggy. I, it was literally perfect right before. Again, another build that um, I love, but I forgot to throw the animals in here. It's the alpacas. Nothing too crazy. It's just kind of themed after like the... Um, the Inca ruins, and I would kind of talk about like how the Incas were able to domesticate the uh, vicuñas and guanacos to make um, llamas and alpacas, so that would be great to have over here. And I'm kind of doing this in reverse, I hope you guys are fine with that. But through here, I have a little bit of a barn owl aviary, so this is where our barn owls would be, inside of a barn. Who would have thought? So that's just a really cute thing to have, and they also do have an outdoor cage as well. Um, so they're able to have outdoor access, which is always great to have. I have a few different aviaries for some other kinds of birds, so ravens, cardinals, stuff like that. And over here, I have a very big exhibit for wild turkeys. So these are our Sylvestris wild turkeys. I believe they would be the eastern wild turkeys. Just really awesome animals. Mods by Narwhaler. Just super awesome to begin with. Um, and yeah, I just really wanted this nice big kind of uh, area where you could check out nice wild turkeys. I always do love to see them in zoos. They're such funny looking animals. Uh, I have another little thing over here. These are either for rabbits or birds. Again, just, you know, just generic kind of uh, aviaries just to keep some animals in. Kind of educate the guests a little bit too. I have some domestic ducks in this area. So I have muscovies and I also have... Just typical domestic ducks. I forget what the actual breed is, but they're just chilling in here. Again, I just wanted to have like this nice big open area. And again, a waterfowl. Gotta love my waterfowl. And right over here, I do have the Rhode Island Red <laughs> chicken coop. So this is kind of like an homage to Hope Island Zoo. So we also do have the, um, yeah, it's the eggplant. I don't, I don't know what else there is to say. It's just a Rhode Island red chicken exhibit. So that's really it for over there. And then we get into this little goofy area. So this is our Santa's Village area. Very much like um, I built this back in, um, I want to say Christmas time. Yeah. So I was like, listen, I think it'd be so stupid. But I think it'd be awesome. So the only two animals in here are reindeer and snowshoe hare. So our snowshoe hares are in that little corn crib, a corn crib aviary right over there. And we also do have a lovely big exhibit for our reindeer too. Uh, it's very Christmas themed. We have the red, green, and white going everywhere. Again, just a very silly build, but I think it fits in well with Hope Harbor. I just think it's adorable. Plus, I love this little um, Santa thing I found on the workshop. It's just Santa's sleigh, and it's just super awesome. I don't know. Look at that. It, it's just so cute. Uh, so moving on from there, we are getting into the Africa section, which is easily like the, I would say this is the coolest part of Hope Harbor Zoo. Uh, so my good buddy Forge actually made this section. He is over in ZSU Africa now, but he was able to bring a little bit of his African goodness over here in a way to create this lovely, lovely section that just demonstrates just a really solid Africa collection. So if you look over to your right, we do have the giraffes. We do have everything kind of like along those lines. And it's just a super solid habitat to begin with. I don't know. I really do like that. It's just a really beautiful view. I don't know. Uh, but we do have this little African village. <laughs> I, I can't stand this lag. Oh my gosh. Um, so we do have this African village. It has some bathrooms and stuff like that. Just really solid area for you to come over here and chill out in. But over here to your right, you can start making your way. And over to the left, we actually do have meerkats. So I'm actually going to hit play. And we could watch them kind of scurry around a little bit. 
and yeah that's really it so this was one of my favorite builds i've ever done here and i did sneak some juvenile uh aldabra tortoises in here just to have them uh aldabra tortoises would not interact with meerkats at all in the wild uh aldabra tortoises are actually only found on one island i think one island it might be two uh but still i just want to throw them in here because they're kind of a desert animal so i was like you know what sure they can kind of squeeze their way in there I'll pause it again, because I'm already sick of the lag. But we do have these giraffes over there. I gotta clean up some of this stuff. It's kind of messy. Uh, but we do have our giraffes over here. Uh, really awesome troop. We only have two males, but it's just super great to have. Uh, no, we only have two females, I want to say. Or two males. I forget. Um... But moving on from there, we also do have an interior for the giraffes as well. So we'll kind of just zip zoom forward right into here. And we do have a couple of cool animals in here. So we do have the uh, Vonderdecken's Hornbills. So they have a nice little aviary in here. Again, these are a little bit too big for Vonderdecken's. They're actually quite small in real life. So that would actually be a fine habitat for them. I also do have Dwarf Crocodile. Again, very standard habitat for these guys. Uh, over here I also do have... I forget what's actually in here. I don't know. I think it might be like Pancake Tortoise. And over here I do have a boa from Wolf. Uh, and I try to give it like the best exhibit possible. Because I know Wolf always loves to see them. See that their animals are going to the best places that really do care for them. And I absolutely do, Wolf. Don't you worry. I just don't have my species list on the side of me right now. So I can't memorize all the animals that we do have in here. But again, I gotta work on that interior a little bit later. But as we kind of continue our way throughout here, we can kind of come out to another savanna. So this is kind of like our beefier hoofstock. Uh, pun completely intended. So we do have our... Uh, Ankoli Watusi cattle. We do have our zebras in here, so we do have plain zebras. And I believe now that we finally have the mod out, we also do have common eland in here. Really solid species. You can see them kind of gallivanting over there. And I also do have Egyptian Faomi chickens. Uh, I just thought that would be a super fun thing just to be able to throw in this habitat. I thought that'd be a, just a silly little thing to have, just having like these chickens around here. Uh, and also I didn't want to build another chicken coop for them, so that kind of worked out perfectly. Plus they're an African breed, which works out even better. So right over here as well, we have this little habitat that we made kind of recently. This is the African Crown Crane exhibit. So this is home to not only African Crown Cranes, which I believe are the Grey Crown Cranes, but we also do have African Spurred Tortoise in here, which currently are not in the exhibit. But it's just a really solid habitat all around, just really nice, really big, and I really do like their pool that they have in there. They really wouldn't need it, but it's just something I wanted to include. And then we have all this open area. Again, this is land that will be developed relatively soon. Uh, but over here, again, we have this lovely little habitat. This is our Owdad habitat. Well, technically not our Owdad. Again, they belong to Wolf. They're currently on loan, but they did just recently have babies. So we should be able to be trading them back to Wolf. Uh, I want to say soon. I don't really know. Um, I think it might be like three or four weeks or something like that. But it's just a really solid Owdad habitat. Again, Owdad are kind of like mountain sheep. So they do have this lovely little area for them to kind of climb and explore. But moving on from there, we have this section over here. This is Moose Town, Maine, and I apologize for, like, the state that it's in right now. Um, apparently, I deleted the roofs to these exhibits, so it's kind of sad. But right over here, we do have Virginia Opossum. Just a really big exhibit for them. Uh, they typically wouldn't be too active, but I wanted to include them nonetheless. We have American Mink in here. Again, just a very solid animal collection. I really want this to be reminiscent of Maine Wildlife Park, which is like the best zoo in Maine. If you're ever up there, if you're in Gray, Maine, I really do suggest you make your way over there because it's one of the best parks ever. It, it really is. It's just a really solid Maine-only animal collection, and it's just perfect for that. But over here, we have our star attraction. We do have the moose. 
So we do have two moose over here, and we also have a baby moose as well. Just a solid habitat. I don't know. I really do like it. Very naturalistic. And I don't know. I just love the vistas in here. It's just so awesome. But moving on from there, we also do have, if I could actually go up here to kind of like sky down view, we do have spotted skunks. Uh, so we only have one spotted skunk, unfortunately. Wow, that is so freaking laggy. Oh my gosh. But we do have this spotted skunk exhibit right over here. I believe they came from Mocha Berry. Again, a really awesome staff member over there. And yeah, that's really it, honestly. Just solid skunk habitat. Love it. Moving on from there, we also have the infamous North American porcupine hyper-realistic habitat. Uh, always. <laughs> I still love this habitat, though. Even for, like, all the controversy it made. Really solid habitat. I don't know. Lots of climbing for these guys. And a lot of climbing compared to most porcupine habitats. Uh, I don't know. It's just super spacious for them. I enjoy it. We have American woodcocks in these little aviaries back here. So we only have one male. But hopefully we could get a female relatively soon if there is ever a new one introduced to the system. Back over here, we do have that interior for the North American porcupines. Currently, the mod is broken, and I'm too lazy to actually fix it. So, just be, please be patient with me, guys. Uh, I also have American Kestrel in here. Got these guys recently. Super awesome species. I was actually able to see them at Ecotarium, another very solid New England institution. So, that's very cool. And we do have the latest habitat to Hope Harbor Zoo. This is the Red Fox Habitat. Finally was able to get these guys back in Hope Harbor Zoo. And yeah, just really awesome animal to begin with. I wanted to feel very naturalistic in here. Uh, kind of overgrown, which is kind of like how most Red Fox habitats are. So I kind of like that. I don't know. Very cool right there. So... If we kind of continue on over here, we're going to tackle this one last. Um, but over here, we're going to make our way to Island of Color. This is my favorite friggin' section around. So, yeah. I kind of worked on this bridge a little bit. It is not done in the slightest. I will be fixing it up relatively soon. But I at least wanted to get the groundwork over here. So it is a suspension bridge. I really want it to be nice and colorful, but I want it to be predominantly white so that once you're walking across this very uh, grayscale bridge, you are just instantly hit with so much color. I'm going to pause the game too, again, just to save on lag. But over here, and I apologize, I won't be going into too much detail because I can tell this video is already too long. But this one was recently made. This is our Japanese macaque habitat. Again, we have a small troop in here, but they are currently pregnant with a few babies on the way. So that is just very awesome to have. Uh, so it's going to be a kind of pseudo Japanese area. So I will have red crown cranes right in this section right here. And I don't think I'll get Sika deer. I don't think it's really in the cards. I don't think it's in the space too. Unless if I really want to expand the island a little bit more, but I've been doing that so much recently that it's like, do I really want to keep doing that? I don't know. But we'll make our way to the Oceania section. This is really the Australia section. Um, so in here, I do have two different types of wallabies. We do have the Bennett's wallabies, which are now officially in the game, which is just really great to have. And we also do have these swamp wallabies in here. Hopefully I can get some more along the way. Uh, I currently have a trade lined up for Tamar wallabies, which is always great to have. But I just love this section more than anything because of the railings and like all the colors with like the uh, actual curbing and stuff like that too. And the rocks as well. It's just a very bright, vibrant area. And this is exactly what I wanted Island of Color to be like first and foremost. So it's just very awesome. In here we only have Emu, which is a little bit sad, but hopefully I could end up getting either Eastern Grey Kangaroos or Red Kangaroos relatively soon. Either one would do perfect in here. So if you do have any sitting around, just let me know. Uh, but moving on from that section over there, we do have another alternative viewing right here. But we do have the pride and joy of Island of Color. This is the boy, the chunky one, 
This is the Southern Hairy-Nosed Wombat named Minibus. Uh, she comes to us all the way from, uh, uh, oh gosh, Billabong Zoo. <laughs> and she will have a mate relatively soon from our good friends at, uh, I want to say Down Under, I think it is, from uh, Jane, I think their name is. Uh, but they will be here relatively soon, so that's just really awesome to have. Uh, but that's really it for our Australia section. And again, we have another interior that I am not really feeling anymore. Just a whole bunch of terrariums. I'm just going to breeze through this very quickly. Uh, we have a whole bunch of terrariums set up, each one very unique. Um, very unique interiors, at least for each one. Uh, but each kind of like section representing a different area, especially this one in here. This one represents Madagascar, so we do have the Safakas in here, if I could actually see them. I think they might have escaped, which is a little bit of a shame, but whatever. I have lemurs on each corner over here. Again, not hitting play because we're already suffering. I'll hit play once we're actually in the aquarium. It's a lot easier in there. Uh, but we do have lemurs in here, so I believe we have at least six or seven different species of lemur, including blue-eyed black lemur now, which is great. But we do have a whole bunch of ring-tailed lemurs. And that's really it, my friends. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling this section anymore. At least this building, I'm not feeling too much anymore. It just really isn't what it used to be. I don't know. Over here we have tigers. I'm going to skip over this mostly because we kind of saw this recently. But we do have tigers in here. We have Sumatran tigers. In here we have our little kind of uh, Sumatra reptile house like small animal house so this is coconut crabs so i do have those guys now so that is pretty awesome i think his name is korok which is just a little legend of zelda re uh legend of zelda uh reference i do have uh fire belly toads i have orchid mantis right in there plantain squirrels previs squirrels all that cool jazz just awesome uh, I have large flying foxes in here. Again, it's just so freaking laggy. I'm sorry, guys. Um, yeah, we have the giant riverbed habitat. So we do have binturongs. We have Indian peafowl. We now have what we recently got from the auction. Our giant Malaysian pond turtles, I believe their names are. And yeah, that's really it. Malayan tapirs are officially pregnant. So that's great. We have that lovely Siamang habitat, easily one of my favorite ones ever. It's just a really solid one. Really nice, really big. We do have a baby in here too, which is really great. Uh, over here, we do have the fishing cat enclosure. One of my favorite enclosures in this zoo, but I still got to work on like the kind of like exterior of it a little bit more. But if I could actually find these guys. Mods by Narwhaler. Um, again, just really, really awesome job with his animals. They are down here. Uh, but yeah, just really awesome animals to begin with. They're taking a little bit of a swim right now. And we only have one sun bear left. <laughs> so that is very great to have. I don't know. I'm just super happy to get three species of bears so far. So it's just super cool. But that is really it for the exteriors, except for this area over here, which we should probably show off. This is our African penguin exhibit. Really solid exhibit to begin with. It's just really big and really dynamic. We have this little section over here where they could actually cross right over you. Using a little bit of funky tricks from uh, using free build a little bit so the penguins can actually swim over you. Very cool stuff right there. But over here is where the actual aquarium will be. And before we actually load into that little um, cover, I'll bring you guys back over here. So this is the underwater observatory. You guys might remember this. So this is uh, a direct rip from Hope Island Zoo. And it was a cheeky way to get me to get like animals that typically would not be in ZSU. So you would see dolphins in here. You would see kind of like um, stripers. Gerald was found around here once or twice. And it's just a really solid area. It's uh, based off of Coral World from St. Thomas. Really awesome institution over there. I really suggest you guys check it out. But without further ado, let's check out the aquarium and the rest of like the interiors. Oh yeah, I also have the birdhouses over here. 
again, just sections that I work on independently. So I keep these guys right over here. Again, I have another waterfowl aviary right in here. Nothing too crazy. Uh, technically, those would be in the section that we just saw over there. But I don't know. I Again, I'm trying to move as many interiors to a separate build as possible just to save on lag. Because you can see how much my computer's kind of chugging along. So I'll tell you what, we are going to end the video, not the video, but the exterior tour right over here. And I will see you all in the aquarium. So catch you on the flip side. Okay, I really can't believe how smooth it is in here. I am so freaking sorry about like not having a better computer to run that crap. Oh my gosh. But welcome everyone <laughs> to the ISO podcast. Uh, this is easily one of my favorite builds in Hope Harbor Zoo because of how stupid it is. So in case if you guys are unaware, there was an event way back in the day for ZSU where you could get domestic animals and included in there were isopods. Uh, so specifically what I wanted to do was take advantage of this and get as many isopod species as possible. So I believe I have over 24 different, different species of like isopods all for like four tokens or something. I don't know. It was so fun just to be able to do that. I'm sure staff hated me for it too, but we have all these different species of isopods in here and I was like, you know what? What's the best way that we could integrate this organically into Hope Harbor Zoo? And I just came up with the word isopodcast. And it was just a super fun thing just to be able to put on here. So we do have a little podcast room. You would probably have keepers doing this every week or so. And it would essentially be kind of like a zoo podcast. So you would have like different members from like different zoos come visit. And kind of talk about their experience in the zoo field and whatnot. And like experience with animals and talk about isopods, I guess. I really don't know. Super, super stupid idea, but it's still my favorite part of Hope Harbor Zoo. But, um, yeah, as we kind of enter this area, I should probably should have like, da 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 da, here we are. <laughs> Here's the aquarium. Uh, this is the Hope Harbor Zoo aquarium. It's huge. Um, and I'm going to be talking about some of these pieces that are in here as well. Uh, I, there's a lot of Aquaria pack in here. The Aquaria pack would make this entire build possible. Uh, so keep that in mind. It won't be out for a bit. Nick and I have been very busy recently. Um, this is kind of like the only free time that I have to record this tour. Uh, and he is also very busy with real life as well. So modding and kind of animals have kind of slowed down. We apologize for that. But we also have to focus on our own lives. So this is essentially what Nick and I kind of drafted up. We wanted this to feel very, very big once you enter in here. So you have all these different things happening in here. You have like these Atlantean ruins back there. You have like this Amazonian section over here. You have kind of like this polar area back there. I don't know. It's just super cool. But we'll kind of continue on with the polar section first. So this is the bare bones of what I want the Titanic exhibit to look like. So I do want a entire tank based off of animals that are around the Titanic wreckage. Uh, so it'd be kind of themed like you're walking through like, you know, one of those 1920 boats or something like that, like a luxury cruise liner. And you would have all these beautiful fish all around. So that's kind of what I want to aim for right there. But unfortunately, fish are kind of slow to get um, in ZSU. But what is cool is that I have this little iceberg diorama right over here, right after the Titanic exhibit. And the iceberg diorama leads into the polar section. I don't know, it just worked out perfectly. So I do have our puffins in here. And you guys might be thinking this is a little bit too small for the puffins. But puffins are quite small. Um, they're about the size of your hand, maybe a little bit bigger. So this section, honestly, is the good... It's a good size for them. And I also do have razor bills in here, which is a very fun animal to have. And there's just a really solid exhibit overall. Again, was able to get these guys through an event. Super awesome just to be able to get more seabirds. And I also do have our penguin exhibit in here. So I believe I only have Gen 2 penguins so far. I'm aiming on getting some more relatively soon, but unfortunately it's not really in the cards. Uh, wasn't able to get any in the auction, but we did get polar bears, so that's pretty fun. 
and the water is not currently in here right now because it interrupts like what's happening down below so i apologize let's just say that we're doing renovations in here huh so coming off of there i don't believe that there's anything over there now you get another big view into here so you could actually see the petting the petting pool okay that's a that's a new term right there we do have the uh touch tank right there and we do have amazon back there we'll check that out and we also do have a whole bunch of smaller tanks in here so we have like a caribbean reef tank we have a whole bunch of like uh invert tanks for like shrimps and stuff like that seahorses all that jazz and we have one big pacific invertebrates tank right there but the crown jewel of the aquarium is this right over here um this is the hope harbor zoo uh, uh, stadium really big um it's quite big and we also do have sea lions in here i don't know where the rest of them are um i think they actually might be boxed up yep let's see if i can unbox them all i think they should be all good to kind of explore their habitat now yep so we did get sea lions in the store i believe uh, so we have the Mean Girls, which are four lovely little ladies. I know I'm going to be working with Tiger Drake to actually get them, you know, to have babies soon. So that'll be really fun. But this is using full advantage of the Atlantean pack that um, Nick really made for the aquatic pack. And it's so, so good. Look at all this stuff. It is gorgeous. I've been dying to show this off in a video. It's my favorite build in here. And it's just super awesome. I have the skylight in here. I'm not really sure if I'm going to keep it open like that, but I do like the light effect that it has in here. Just having a little bit of natural light. I do need to work on these grandstands. I'm not really the biggest fan of these. We kind of just had these down here as a placeholder, but I'll be working on that stuff relatively soon. So directly below that section right there, we'll kind of start off with this area. We do have American alligator. I would not have a male this big. Um, ideally my male would be about half the size of that, but that's kind of what we're working with right there. His name is Chandler. <laughs> um, so leading your way into here, we have the whole freshwater section. Uh, so we have axolotls, giant water bugs. We have our Japanese rice fish. It's just a really solid collection in here. I'm not going to go through all the tanks, but I just really, really do like it. We have European tanks in here. We have like a giant Asian fish section in here with snake heads currently I believe just really awesome stuff across the board lots of stuff from the national park event because I know I wanted to focus on fish for that one we have the Nile monitor in here unfortunately I don't have them actually placed down here as animals I think it would honestly mess with so many collision things that it's kind of like I'm not even gonna bother but we do have hermit crabs fiddler crabs western toads all this stuff is pretty cool. We do have, um, uh, hellbent, not hellbenders. It's, um, it's the other salamander. I forget what the name is. Maybe it's hellbender. I really don't know. I forget. I for gore, but over in this area over here is the last thing in Hope Harbor Zoo so far. This is the Amazon section. Easily my favorite part. I think it's my favorite part of the aquarium. The, uh, stadium gets second place to that. But this is just, it really hasn't changed from the last time we checked it out. So it's just one big aquarium. So we do have our larger freshwater fish in there. We have this section right here, which would kind of demonstrate how flooded forests work. So the water level would go up and down as time goes on. We have our Amazon, like small Amazon fish in here. It's just a large planted tank. So we do have our angel fish. We have some neon tetras in there. Super awesome mix. Another place for tetras right over there. I would like to get electric eels too. Uh, here's another little section in here for the larger fish to kind of like hide out in. So I would imagine like the catfish would kind of chill out in there. And we also do have this section for piranhas as well because we finally got those guys too. Just a really solid section. I love that coloring right there. It just looks awesome. And again, I should probably talk about another interior that we have in here. You can see I kind of started on at least placing down the Madagascar house is what I think I'm going to call it. Uh, but over here, I also do have the hotels. So Hope Harbor Zoo does technically have a hotel. We didn't really talk about it in the um, 
actual tour video, but it is right in between Island of Color and the aquarium. But it's just really solid hotel rooms. I don't know, I kind of like it. These paintings are by Christina, I believe. Uh, custom bathrooms, which was super fun to put together. Um, and just custom hallways. Really cute. I thought it was a super fun idea just to be able to get, like, you know, at least a small main styled hotel in here. And yeah, that's honestly really it, my friends. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. This was super fun just to be able to show off, like, the progress in Hope Harbor Zoo. Uh, it's been a long time in the works, and I am going to leave us off over here just checking out, like, you know, the uh, aquarium and stuff. We also do have these little viewing sections for the sea lions right here on the base level, so you are actually able to look in here and see what they're up to down there. But that is really it. I'm going to leave us over here and actually watching the sea lion show to begin with. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Oh, God. Wow. That was a long, long tour. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Season 3 is going to have a lot of awesome stuff, hopefully. Knock on wood. Maybe I'll come into, like, a windfall of money and be able to upgrade my computer so that the cinematics aren't, like, laggy as hell. But either way, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Goodbye now.